My name is Joe Hinkle. This training video is on a Hinkle controller configuration. We're going to be talking about networking configuration. So we're going to go to wired ethernet. Here you're going to find what the controller's MAC address is and what the network name. Now by default when you receive your controller or you do a factory reset DHCP is enabled. DHCP tells the controller, hey, I don't know the controller, I don't know what my IP address is, but there's some other person on the network that if I raise my hand and say, hey, I want an IP address, they'll give me one. That someone on the network is called a DHCP server. That DHCP server is responsible for giving out IP addresses on its network. Now, what do I mean by on its network? See these first three numbers here? 192, 168, 1 here? That is a subnet. That defines a network that that DHCP server is responsible for. The last number is unique to every device that's connected to that network. Notice, no two devices on a network can have that same last number, a given that all the, th the first three are the same. You cannot have two devices with the same IP address or you're going to have network issues. It's like sitting in a classroom with two young ladies by the name of Mary and the teacher turning around and starting to yell at Mary and Mary looks at the other Mary and says, which Mary is she talking about? The same thing with networking. If you've got two devices with the same IP, you don't know what's going on. The alternative is to uncheck this that tells the controller that you are now responsible for assigning a static or an IP. That is termed a static IP. Static because you are defining it right here. So I could turn around and make this uh, 221 if I wanted to. Okay? That better be unique. Now here's the difference. By you setting a static IP, you're controlling specifically what network your controller will communicate on, but you are also responsible for making sure that no other con device or controller on that network has that IP address. Now, here's a general overall statement. When you're setting a static IP and it happens to be on a network, that also has a DHCP server, okay? DHCP servers normally start allocating their IP addresses at the low count, two, three, four, five, okay? The highest this number can be is 255, but nobody gets 255 because that's kind of a universal. I'll suggest you never go above uh, 253. So if you're gonna assign a static IP, make it above 220 or make it at least above 200. You've got a lot better chance of not getting in conflict with IPs being handled out by DHCP, okay? Um, your mask should always be 255, 255, 255, zero. The gateway, if you're running a static IP, normally you don't need a gateway. I'm gonna suggest you put a gateway in all the time the first three numbers matching, the last number being a one. That's a good habit to get into. When you are on a network that does have a router or a DHCP server, normally the gateway is a one at the end. That's why I say it's normally a good, um, good way of doing that. If you make changes, we're going to put this back to 82 because that's where I was. If you happen to make changes, save changes this page. Now, if you go off this page, if you navigate off this page without checking this, any changes you made are going to be lost. So when you click this, it'll turn blue. 
that gives you feedback that your changes were actually communicated back to the controller, the controller accepted them, and they're recorded. It'll alternate blue and red. So if you were to make another change and save it, it'll go back to red, just to give you some feedback. Now the net, next network configuration is Wi-Fi. Again, same up here with the Wi-Fi. This button, Disable Wi-Fi, turns off the access point. Primarily, this is for commercial people. If they're not using Wi-Fi, some commercial uh, customers don't want all of the controllers that are around the property broadcasting their access points. A lot of Wi-Fi noise. So if you disable this, I effectively turn off the Wi-Fi device altogether. It's not an access point. It's nothing. It's dead. What I would like you to all consider is activating the Wi-Fi device on your controller. Why do I say that? Well, earlier we said under network configuration under wired, you could have a static IP. Many users run a, what I'll call an isolated network, a network that's not connected with the rest of their home it is a network primarily designed just to communicate with all of the controllers in their show and connected directly to a uh, Ethernet port on their computer. If that's the case, the controller cannot get out to the Internet to see if there's any firmware updates, which, as the developer, I like to make sure you are always up to date on your firmware. So. There's two things that Wi-Fi is responsible for on your controller. Number one, do a firmware check and download firmware if the hardwired connection does not have access to the Internet. The second thing it's responsible for is when you're operating in standalone mode, which means there's no computer driving the show. The show is all being driven off of an SD card. If there are multiple Hinkle controllers in a standalone show, they need to synchronize their activities with one another. And one of the ways they can do that is via Wi-Fi. So that is the second case. What I would always recommend is once you get yourself settled in, activate Wi-Fi. That way you can be assured that you're always going to get the latest firmware from me. Now there's two things. Number one is the SID. That is the uh, ID of the access point or the name of the access point. If you're on a wireless computer and you bring up, if you go to the control panel and you bring up properties on that, that will usually be the name uh, of that wireless that you're looking at. Now, the wireless on the Hinkle controller is a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi wi device. 5 gigahertz is starting to become very prevalent in the residential area. This will not communicate with a 5 gigahertz access point. It has to be 2.4. SSIDs are the name of the access point is very case sensitive. So when you put it in there, make sure your spelling is correct and you're using proper upper and lower case. And you put your password in. This check mark for delete is if you want to erase all of this and basically blow it away and start all over again, if you click this and save, I'll erase this within the controller. So I'll remove uh, your, your wireless capabilities. Now, had you put in a correct SSID, had you put in a correct password, and you saved it, and when you reset, you will know whether this has been successfully entered, because after reset, the Wi-Fi will be given this information, and it will attempt to contact the access point that you've identified. If the SID is incorrect, or the password is incorrect, on the display, it will tell you that you have a Wi-Fi error. Wi-Fi error means that either the SID 
or the password is not correct. If the SID and the password is correct, you will not get an error. The next thing the Wi-Fi device does is attempts to communicate outside via the internet. And it does that by communicating with a known uh, website. If it can communicate on the outside, it will start blinking an orange light on the CPU board. It's kind of a Wi-Fi heartbeat light. It'll go on and off every second. So one second on, one second off. That's your visual indication that your Wi-Fi device is active, can access the access point, can get to the uh, outside wireless. This is actually talking about the IP address and everything within the Wi-Fi. I'm going to strongly suggest you leave it DHCP enabled. Unless you're a real techie and you got a reason for going in and specifically playing around with the IP, the mask, and the gateway of your Wi-Fi device, I'm going to strongly suggest you stay away from here. If we scroll down, I give you some information on how to set up Wi-Fi. I've already talked about setting it up here. The other way is probably the, the hardest thing for a user is this SSID. What's the name of the access point? Okay. The other way of doing it is as I define down here, which I'll verbally convey now, if you have like a, um, a tablet or an iPad, what you can do is go into the settings of, I have an iPad, I have a, a um, boy, I'm lost for words. I have an iPad. So if you go into settings of iPad and you go to Wi-Fi, uh, it'll list all of the Wi-Fi access points that are transmitting. And you'll see one that'll say Hinkspix, okay? It'll say Hinkspix, which means that's this access, that's the access point associated with the Wi-Fi device on the Hinkle controller that's transmitting. You want to connect to it. So you want to tell your iPad to connect to that access point. So now it's talking directly to the Wi-Fi device on your Hinkle controller. Once you do that, you go over to the browser on your iPad and you type in the address 192.168.4.1. And what you'll get is you'll get a web page that comes up, and the web page will tell you all of the access points that your Wi Fi controller can see. You pick the one. These SSIDs or these names will all be properly identified. So all you got to do is pick the one that you own, pick the one that's the closest, that has the uh, uh, best reception capability, you type the password in, and then you hit the button that says, hey, go ahead and accept this. Watch for the orange light. If it was successful in connecting to that access point and to the uh, internet, you'll see the orange light start blinking anywhere between two and six seconds after doing that. That concludes this training video on Hinkle controller configuration with respect to network configuration.